Guys, welcome. It's a beautiful cold morning in Brooklyn, New York. We are Namaste Warrior Yoga. To my right, we have my friend Carol. Carol will be demonstrating level one postures. Level one postures are about taking easy on the joints. If you'd like to challenge yourself and you have the capacity and you want to build up more endurance, try what Alexandra is doing on my left. Remember, all of these levels are quite challenging. Even level one is far more difficult than the majority of beginner yoga classes. The idea behind Namaste Warrior Yoga is that if you try this particular method of strength and conditioning yoga, I'd like for you to be able to go to any yoga studio around the world and be able to hang in and excel in any beginner and intermediate yoga classes. Not only that, but this is for your personal strength and endurance qualities, for you to become stronger mentally and physically. First, we will begin sitting in a comfortable seat. So the ladies have chosen not to use bolsters. I'm sitting on a bolster to prop myself up at home Prop yourself up on yoga towels, buy a yoga bolster, get comfortable. Generally, you want your hips above your knees to let the blood flow down into the feet. And like I said, the lady's chosen not to use the props, so they are comfortable as they are. Carol on my right is performing Sukhasana easy seat with her legs crossed and feet right underneath her knees. Alexandra has her uh, left heel on top of her right heel in the adept's pose. And this is my favorite position for breathing and meditation as well. If you'd like lotus posture, please see my other excerpt on how to sit in yoga classes. Today's breath for class two of strength and conditioning yoga, the yoga foundations of Namaste Warrior Yoga, is Kapalabhati breath aka sky, skull shining breath. When you're performing skull shining breath, the idea is to make the breath so powerful, so forceful, that you feel energized at the end. You feel relaxed simultaneously, and you feel refreshed, like after a good cup of gel, a good cup of coffee. How to perform Kapalabhati breath? You briskly breathe out through your nose as if you're expelling air. Kind of like sneezing. So before you perform Kapalabhati breath, make sure you clear out your nostrils. As you exhale, you sharply contract the belly button towards the spine. It's a quick and powerful contraction that will in involve your diaphragm pulling down and pushing the air out through the lungs and out your nostrils. It is something like this. So with each exhale, I am pulling my belly in sharply and that helps me to expel the air out of my nostrils. The idea behind this exercise is to feel lightheaded and feel high, relaxed and energized to start our endurance yoga practice. So let us begin. Ladies, the first round is a hundred exhalations. Now you can go at your own pace. So maybe you go slow, maybe you go fast. And the same for our viewers. Start slowly if you're a beginner and then learn to ride your wave, ride your breath as if it was a surfer, right? Ride it like a wave. So let's begin our first round of Kapalabhati breath, a hundred exhalations. Take a deep breath in and start. Find a pace that works for you. If you are pregnant, if you have high blood pressure, if you have heart disease, or you feel dizzy or irritated when performing your Kapalabhati breath, make sure to stop or not do it at all, especially if you have 
the full list of those things that I mentioned. If you just feel dizzy, maybe you stop, go back to natural form of breathing, and then try again. As a beginner, you might want to do one exhale per second. If you want to speed up, go ahead, medium pace. And if you find easy to ride your breath, you go fast. Once you become proficient, and skillful in performing Kapalavati breath, you always want to go fast, and that way you get to the end of your exercise quicker. When you get to the end of your breathing exercise, take a deep, 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 deep breath in and hold it in as long as you can. Kumbhaka breath retention. Keep your neck tension free. Keep the tension out of your shoulders. Face is soft. Let your shoulders and elbows drape down the sides of your torso. Palms up on top of your thighs. Index fingers and thumbs touch. In a mudra, a hand gesture of completeness. When it's no longer comfortable for you to hold your breath in, you simply breathe out through your nostrils and relax, enjoying the after effects of deep, powerful Kapalabhati breathing. Always pay attention. Always follow yourself. Maintain consciousness as if you were a witness to your experience. This is what true attention is all about. This is what mindfulness is all about. Paying attention on purpose to yourself without judgment in the present moment. Can you do that? Hmm. Again, we will start up Kapalabhati breath, another cycle of 100 measured exhalations. You may begin. Inhale and start. Make sure that as you are exhaling powerfully, you are maintaining length in your spine. The back of the skull is rising up towards the top of the ceiling tiles. Your lower ribs are not sticking out. Your lower ribs are gently pulled in. Your chin is pulled in, maintaining a vertical spine. pulling the belly button towards the spine, punching the breath out, punch, punch, exhale, 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 and ride the breath, find the pace that works for you. I always say, never follow blindly the instructor or your classmates when you're in a yoga classroom. Be mindful of your own experience. If you cannot maintain a certain pace, Find the one that works best for you and keep building up your proficiency until you become a powerful and fast Kapalabhati breather. Inhale and hold. Floating your ribs above the pelvis, floating your skull softly above your shoulders. Mindfulness, paying attention. 
by inhaling and holding the breath in, we're absorbing as much air as possible, stretching out the tissues of our lungs, which expands the volume of air and oxygen we can take into the lungs. The more air you take in, the more oxygen is absorbed into your blood stream. Try to practice with a sense of joy and enthusiasm. It's always best when you're enthusiastic about the practice, when you feel committed to the practice, devoted. So devotion, commitment, enthusiasm are necessary ingredients for health and happiness to be achieved in your yoga practice. If you haven't exhaled already, exhale and relax. If you fell out of consciousness with your seat, come back into your seat. <clears throat> Notice if you feel your sitting bones grounded and your spine rising up out of the hips. Jaw soft, back of the neck long, regular breath. One last cycle of Kapalabhati breath. Everything is better done in threes. So this is our third and final set of Kapalabhati breath. Take a deep breath in and let's begin. measured approach. Make sure that you are counting your exhalations. Exhale one, exhale two, exhale three. Keep going until you get to your goal. In life, you want to be on purpose. You want to have goals in order to have meaningful existence. And in yoga, we don't only want to be purposeful, we also want to know if we are becoming better if there is progress. The worst part about living is bitterness of not getting what you want. You only get what you want when you learn how to build through progress, through consistent effort towards your goals. So here we are, joyfully, trying to build up our proficiency and our skill level in Kapalabhati breath to become energized, to become relaxed, and to expel all of the toxins out of our lungs. This is also a cleansing exercise. Each exhale has the potential to detoxify as you're bring, bringing in oxygen in. Deep breath in, and let's take an air in. And if you have exhaled early, right? Maybe take in another breath in and see how long you can hold the air in your lungs, expanding the tissues, stretching out your lung organ. Try to perform these exercises with peace in your heart and mind. Exhale and relax. Notice if you've built any tension in your temples and the third eye area in between your eyebrows and one inch above. Maybe through awareness, becoming aware of your face, the muscles underneath, you can relax the tissues that hold the tension. Excellent work. Now, open your eyes. And let's transition to all fours. You may move your props out to the sides. And let's come to cat-cow transition. Make sure your hands are underneath the shoulders. Spread your fingers nice and broad. Spread your toes so your whole body is becoming alive. Each nerve in your body is awake. Push the floor away and see if you can corkscrew the upper arms outwards, externally, so your elbows are now facing more backwards and the pits of your armpits, uh, elbows are facing forwards. 
Good. The palms are pressing down and also core spring slightly out. Spread your shoulder blades nice and broad. On the inhale, pull your belly down, arch the spine. Lift the chin. Look up. On the exhale, pull the belly in and look towards your belly button. Round. Inhale, arch. Cow. Exhale, round for Halloween cat. Inhale. Exhale. Good, ladies, continue. I have set the alarm for one minute. So we're going to be doing cat cow for one minute. Inhale, deep breath in, exhale out. The type of breathing you want to perform in cat cow is our standard yogic breath for an asana or postures class. That form of breathing is called ujjayi. Ujjayi means victorious. For you to feel a sense of victory, and energy within your body at the end of the class, you must learn to perform ujjayi for the rest of it. So starting now, ujjayi breath. Throat slightly constricted as if you're fogging glass. Same thing with your mouth closed. Breathing through your nostrils. Good. Breathing in. Ujjayi. Come to neutral spine. And breathing out. We will continue breathing Ujjayi for the remainder of the class. Cross your right shin bone over left. Pull back onto your buttocks and extend your feet forward. Let's come down on our backs. Grab a block. Place the block in between your thighs. And flex the feet. Spread the toes. Make sure your lower back is flat. There's no space in your lower back. You can even try to slide your hand underneath to feel if there's any space. And then maybe press even your lower ribs down even further. No space. No air getting through your lower back and the mat. Excellent. Pull your belly button towards the spine. Extend your arms forward, palms facing one another, and curl up like you're doing a hedgehog curl. Excellent. We will be holding this pose for one minute. Intense concentration. Breathing in, ujjayi. And breathing out. Try to roll your shoulder blades off the floor. And the timer is running. We are breathing and curling up, gently squeezing the block in between the thighs. The first 40 minutes of this class about are going to be about intensity and building up in strength and endurance, right? You will be sweating, you'll be perspiring. If you get tired at any time, you can just relax or take child's pose. Arms in front, forehead to the floor, hips on heels. This is the official yoga resting pose. So when we're doing postures, drop into child's pose. If you're doing hedgehog curl, simply relax and then rejoin the class whenever you're ready. Good. Slowly release. Move the block out to the side, ladies, and come sitting up on your hands. Drop your elbows down, right underneath your shoulders. Again, pull in the belly. Left right leg up, left leg up. 45 degrees. Inhale up, spread the toes. You're balancing in your forearms, and exhale, release the feet down. Two inches off the floor. Inhale up. Ujjayi breath out, leg lifts, inhale, exhale, inhaling up, exhaling down, 45 degrees, and down 2 inches, inhale up, exhale down. Deep breathing follows as you inhale up and you'll notice your exhale on the way down. Strengthening our lower abdominals. Good. Notice the heat building in your body. Ten more. One. 
Two, if you get tired, just release the feet to the floor. Three. Four, these are killers. Especially when you're starting out. Six. Seven, try not to give up if it's possible. Keep going for eight. Lifting for nine. Last one, lift, lift, lift. And release. Good, sit up. Cross your left over right and come down to your belly. Move the left leg back, right leg back. All the way down to your belly. Make sure your pelvis is against the floor. Men, you need to move your junk out to the sides so you can press your pelvis down. Now, locust pose, arms by your sides. Pull your feet together, pull your toes back. Lift only your upper body. Roll the shoulder heads back. Lift your thighs off the floor. We are flying in locust pose. The skull is pulling forward, the back of the neck is long. Breathing in. And breathing out, five breaths. Shoulder blades are squeezing towards one another behind the back. Palms towards one another. Lift, lift, lift. And pull the palms together. That's it. Very good. For three. Four. One more. Inhale slow. And exhale release. Cobra pose. Hands under the shoulders. Feet together. Pull the toes back. Press the thighs, shin bones down, feet down, roll yourself up, stretch your belly. Come up only as high as you need, so coming up slow. If this hurts your lower back, extend the arms in front of you. Lift up the heart, scoop the chest forward and up, shoulders remain broad. Neck is soft, deep breath in. And exhale, release the belly down, push off the floor. Again, cross your feet, sit back. And we again perform the hedgehog curl for set number two. Like I said, everything goes better in threes. This is our second set. Grab your block. Place the block in between the thighs. And let's go. Move back. Flex your feet. One minute. And let's begin. Curl up. The timer has been set. Breathe. Belly button pulling down towards the spine. Shoulder blades rolling off the floor. Gently squeezing the block with your inner thigh muscle. Maintain consistency and build your endurance. Pulling your fingers forward. Breathe. Even if you can't hold this pose for a long time, at least learn yogic breathing, ujjayi, and still feel victorious at the end of the class. Breath work is so important in a yoga class. So make sure that you're following along your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Excellent, slowly release, leg lifts. Let's sit up, come up high. 20 leg lifts, hands underneath the buttocks, only back, suck in your belly button, feet together, spread the toes, inhale up, exhale, down, two inches off the floor, hold, inhale, lift, keep your belly button pulled in at the spine the entire time, deep transverse abdominus muscles and pelvic core muscles activate. For three, four, stay motivated, five, six, now here I would like for you guys to follow my pace as the way I'm moving the legs. A lot of times when I'm in class I notice people flailing their legs up and down like a wild person. Don't be wild. This is about self-control. For seven. Eight. It's okay for the legs to wobble. 
You can bend your knees a little if you want. Nine. Ten. Man, I'm feeling that heat in the body. Eleven. Twelve. Inhale up. Thirteen. Fourteen. Try to keep the tension out of the face. The facial muscles can help you here. What you need is core and hip flexors. So this strengthens the hip flexors too. Eight. Remember at home to do 20 of these leg lifts, or as many as you can. And slowly release. Excellent. All right, turn to your belly. Cross your ankles, pull the ankles towards you, and transition onto your belly. We go non-stop. And roll yourself up, five deep breaths. Locust pose. This time bring your arms out to the sides. And spread your feet mad distance apart. Pull your toes back like a flying starfish. For three. Back bending at the middle spine, the heart. Lifting the thighs off the floor for four. And slowly, hands underneath the shoulders, feet together. Pull your toes back, curl up cobra. If it's hurting your back, hands in front. Way in front, and that's all right. Breathe. Since we have chosen not to play music in the class, you can hear ours breathe. Try to establish your own breathing patterns. In traditional yoga classes, there are no music. Since we're doing calisthenics, you might want to pump up your favorite beats at home. That's your choice. And when we transition into doing our standing postures, maybe turn the volume down a little bit so you can focus more on the breath. Excellent. Press yourself up. Left over right, or right over left, and sit back down in your buttocks. Last set. Man, these are hard. Block, inner thighs, curl up. Core work is so important. The core is the midsection of the body. You have the upper body, you have the lower body from hips on down through the legs and feet. You have the upper body from rib cage all the way through your skull. What's connecting the two is your midsection. And in order to support your spine, we need to learn to tighten the muscles around the midsection as if you were wearing a tight corset. So we are developing our corset muscles. You didn't set the timer. Oh boy, you didn't <laughs> set the timer. It's okay. 30 seconds. Alright, I'll take it easy on you guys. Keep the shoulder blades off the floor. Press your lower ribs into the floor. Spread your toes. Breathe. Excellent. And come up. Leg lifts. Like I said, you will feel tension in your hip flexors as you're doing leg lifts. 20 of these on your own. Inhale up now. 45 degrees. Exhale. Two inches off the floor. Inhale. Exhale. I used to despise these exercises, specifically the leg lifts. The core used to be the weakest part of my body until I injured my lower back, had to go to my physical therapist, 
and my physical therapist gave me the bad news that indeed I don't know how to engage my abdominals. <laughs> Most yoga classes do not focus so much on the core. There's a few, a few exercises here and there, but not specifically in sequence to build up real strength and endurance to protect your lower back and to give you real balance in the midsection for postures like headstand, handstand, shoulder stand, any time that you're doing any form of standing balance, your core is going to be recruited. So by training your abdominal muscles, by training your hip flexors, you will have better control over your legs, you'll have better control over the manipulation of your spine. So important to train your core. And after I started performing these exercises that were prescribed to me by my physical therapist, I felt infinitely better and the lower, pain, the lower back pain went away. Excellent. Okay, transition onto your belly. Last locust pose. Ladies, why don't you move back a little bit and try Superman or Superwoman pose in your case. So the last Locust pose will be actually a variation called Superman, Superwoman, yes? So extend the arms forward and lift up. Pelvis down, point your toes, wonderful. Five breaths, please. Good, keep pulling the toes back, thighs off the floor. Now, please understand, when you are doing exercises which involve gripping your core to a, to a degree, your diaphragmatic breathing will be reduced. You must learn to breathe into your upper lungs. And even though your breath will be slightly shallower, it should still be fairly deep to supply you enough oxygen that you need. Ladies, let's take a break. That's good. Let's take a break. Bring your head down. Hands maybe underneath your face. And take a little break. In yoga, we go through phases of contraction and release. Contract, release. Contract, release. And that's what gives us that ah, relaxation at the end of the class. That deep, deep tension releasing quality. All right, it's time for our test. No good yoga is good without measurement. So let's start with our forearm plank. We will do one minute on each side. We'll do forearm plank on our weak side first, then we'll do forearm plank in the middle, and then we'll do forearm plank or side forearm plank on our strong side. So make sure you start on your weak side first. So ladies, choose the side that's weak for you. My right arm is always the weakest. Forearm perpendicular, uh, parallel to the short edge of the mat, body sideways. And let's begin. Left hand on the hip or up at the sky. Your choice. Same thing, my friends. Ensure that your midsection is being wrapped tightly. The muscles of your transverse abdominis, the muscles of your obliques, are wrapped around to support and fortify your spine. To do that, you must imagine that these muscles of the obliques and the transverse abdominis and the rectus abdominis are like a corset. And you use these corset-like muscles to support the extension of your spine. You're preventing collapse in this fashion. 14 seconds remaining. Hmm. Three, two, one. Excellent. Come to the middle now. Forearms underneath you. Elbows right underneath the shoulders. Interlace your fingers. Suck in the belly. Lower back flat. And let's begin. Nice. So if you're sticking your butt out, butt up, make sure to tuck your pelvis and scoop it underneath your shoulders. 
keeping your lower back flat. At home, I have a mirror. And I do these in front of the mirror to ensure that I'm in fact flat. In class, you might want to ask your neighbor. My belly button pulled towards the spine, pelvis tucked under the upper torso, heels pulling back, thighs engaged. So notice how much heat is being built in the body. The muscles are becoming softer in the process through this ignition. And soft muscles are easier to stretch muscles. Simple science. And switch to your strong side. Side forearm plank. Legs in one line. If for some reason you start to lose your balance, bring your top foot in front of the, the back leg, the bottom leg. Think about going up. Stop thinking about, oh my God, I'm going to fall. Think about lifting upwards, lifting the hips. Holding your corset muscles, we're going up. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Keep telling yourself that and go forth and conquer. Build endurance in the muscles that support your lumbar spine. Four, three, two, one. Excellent. Release down to your belly. Sphinx pose. Elbows right underneath. Spread your fingers. Excellent. Lift your chin. Pull your toes back. Shimmy your hips side to side with your lower back nice and soft. Feel the suppleness of your lumbar spine. After all that contracting in that region, we want to be nice and loose. Hmm. Lift your elbows off the floor. Find your right foot. Find your left foot. Keep your elbows straight. Find your right foot. Find your left foot. Right foot. Left foot. Right foot. Left foot. Right foot. Left foot. Look forward. Elbows down. Slide the hands back and let's come up for Hindu squats. Like I said, at home, Hindu squats are good to perform to music, so you get lots of energy. All right, let's come to, you guys will be at the middle of your mat. Let's take a little break. Set up. For Hindu squats, you want your feet hip distance apart. Plant it into the floor. Both of the ladies will be doing it with heels down. Inhale, scoot the arms behind you, thighs parallel to the floor. Try not to bounce off your calves. Inhale, as you come up, pull the fists in, exhale. I will be doing it with heels off the floor, which is a balanced posture, a harder balance. Okay, this is called Hindu squat. Maximum intensity, go for broke. You ladies ready? And let's begin. Three minutes. All right. Like all of yoga, find your pace. If you're a beginner, go slow. Try not to lean so much forward. Try to keep your spine vertical. Get your butt down, knees forward. Knees go forward, butt down. Arms behind you, scoop, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Start with your heels on the floor. 
And whenever you, you maintain, whenever you gain proficiency, get your heels off the floor and try the Hindu squat way, full expression of the pose. Deep respiration. Breathe in through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Inhale, exhale. Building explosive power in our legs. Flexibility in the joints. And the more you do these, the easier they get. The more you want to do them, the more energy you get. Concentrate your gaze forwards and try to stay concentrated. Concentrating helps with balance. If you lose your balance, don't worry about it. That is to be expected. Keep going. Build power. All of yoga is really about building power. Sometimes it's good to go to a point of failure. All right. Whew. Shoulders roll back. Mountain pose. Palms facing out. Shoulder blades gently pull back behind you. Chest opens. Notice if you can become sensitive to the heartbeat in your ribcage. Hmm. Allowing yourself to slow down to release the tension. Are you leaning forward? Feel the pressure of your feet centered in between the balls and the heels of your feet. Right in between your arches. And your upper body stacked over the hips. You're in the middle of your central axis of the spine, all the way through the center of your skull up. Be tall, be spacious, breathe. Good, before we lose momentum, let's continue with some deep side stretching. Lift your arms up. The left hand will grab the right wrist. Fingers together of your right hand, and let's bend over to the left for five breaths. Look underneath your armpit. Find the center of your balance in between both feet as you lean to the left for five. Four. Use those corset muscles to extend. You should feel a deep, deep extension through the right side of your body. The rib cage expand. You're able to breathe more into the right side for two. One. A little bit more depth. And come on. Switch. Right hand, left wrist. Extend the left arm first. There's energy through the arm. The elbow is fully extended. And now on your exhale, to the right. Look underneath your armpit. Keep extending the top arm. Use your right hand to help you extend the left forearm. There's a lot of work involved. 
see if you can bring your mind to multitask functionally. Right hand helping extend the left arm more and more, which extends the space in the left side of your ribs, all the way through the left side of your body. For a three, two, one, and then exhale, come up. And release your arms by your sides. The next calisthenic exercise will be either Hindu push-ups or Don catch stretch. So, let's begin. Two minutes of that. Let's come down to our downward facing dog position. Are you ladies ready? Two minutes. If you get tired, downward dog or child's pose. Whenever in doubt, child's pose, right? These are intense exercises. Let's begin. Inhale forward, exhale back. The ladies are performing Don Catch Stretch, and I'm performing the full Hindu push up. Do what feels right for you. And if none of these work, two minute downward facing dog. As you pull back from catch stretch, ensure that you're sucking the belly muscle and the stomach itself up towards the chest cavity. So right here, pull in the belly button, lift the core and pull back from the core itself. Yes, you shouldn't feel this in your lower back. You should be feeling the core moving your hips backwards. Go forwards, roll the chin back, chin all the way up. And on the exhale, pull in the belly all the way up to the chest cavity and send the hips all the way back. Drop the heels. Excellent. Beautiful work. Let's continue. Less than 40 seconds remaining. Synchronize the movements with your breath. Sometimes better to go slow. Some days, you might want to go for explosive speed. How are your elbows feeling? What about your shoulders? Are you exercising with proper technique? Sloppy yoga leads to injury. Be mindful when you practice, even when you're doing calisthenics. Excellent. Okay. Let's come up. Interlace your fingers in front of you, like you're hugging a big barrel. Spread your feet about a mat distance apart, but inside your mat. More, 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 Alex. More, more, more. Bend your knees. Pull in your belly, contract your corset. Only the upper body moves. Inhale right, exhale left, okay? And begin. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Drop your hips a little, Alex. Power in the thighs. Thighs firm. Pelvis facing forward. We're twisting the spine now. Rinsing out and detoxifying the organs. Come back to center. Inhale left, exhale, rotate to the right. All right, like hugging a barrel, ladies. Like a barrel, yeah, this is a barrel? Kind of. <laughs> Square barrel. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. See if you can get around yourself. Your rib cage turns the spine. Spiraling action. We're making the spine fluent. We're making the spine vibrant. We're making it flow through these rotations. 
given the spine all of the movement up, down, forwards, backwards, and side to side. And come back to center. Good. Hands to the hips. Spread your feet a little wider than the mat now. Now, hips to the left. Forward, clockwise, to the right. Back, left, forward, right, back, and clockwise. Hip rotations. So get into your hips, guys. A lot of people, for some reason, when I see in class, they start moving their shoulders and the hips stay stationary. Hips, this is your hips area. Get in your hips and move hips clockwise, making big circles. Set a pace for you. If you're a beginner, do not give up on our program. Give it a shot. Do the best that you can. Take child's pose frequently. frequently. My first three years of coming to yoga consistently, two to three times per week, I would take child's pose for maybe half of the class. My body simply wasn't used to exercising. And let's go counterclockwise. And as I build up a healthy yoga routine, the postures became a healthy habit and I was able to do more. And each day I would be able to progress and that's what kept me coming back. So look for little incremental progress and you will do fine. Make sure to pat yourself in the back, have some green tea after class and enjoy. Look, go clockwise now. And counterclockwise. Excellent, okay. Last exercise, let's come down to our knees. This last exercise is backbone enhancer. It's a neck strengthening pose. Not everybody should do this, especially if you have any sort of compression or pain in your neck. If you have neck pain or when you press your head into the floor, you encounter severe anxiety or discomfort. Do not do this pose. Do downward dog for exactly a minute. Otherwise, Alex, please, if you can demonstrate, I think, Carol, you'll do a downward dog. So if you can do that now. And Alex will do the level two variation, which is a headstand prep. Now, we don't do headstands in this practice. We do preparation. So like I said, when you go to any other yoga class, you're able to hold your own. Here, we're trying to strengthen and condition the body, and we're trying to get the neck muscles to be stronger. So you're extending your skull into the floor, shoulder blades up the back, the tail is extending. So these, this is called headstand prep. And I will be doing neck rolls. Neck rolls, you bring your head down, same thing, hands underneath your shoulders, walk your feet in, and you roll your head, bring in the forehead to the floor, and then you roll forward to the back of the head. Forehead, back of the head, forehead, back of the head. Here at Namaste Warrior Yoga, we have padded mats underneath our yoga mats. A lot more forgiving for your skull. If at home you encounter pain even through your yoga mat, get a thicker yoga mat, do this on blankets, or you can do this uh, by doubling up on your mat. You can also do head rolls with your head back, lifting up, and bridge pose neck rolls. Keep going. If you need a break, take a break, Alex. Same thing. Okay. So these are the different variations of neck rolls at home. Do whichever works for you. All right. That concludes our Hindu calisthenics program. Let's take a break in hero's pose. Bring your knees together and feet about mad distance apart. Roll your calves out. Try to sit your buttocks in between the heels. If you feel discomfort, 
in your knees or tightness in your upper thighs, grab a block and sit on top of the block. For some people, just being in hero's pose is already conquest. If you want to start deepening your progress and stretching out the knee ligaments and your thigh, thigh muscles, start leaning back. So for me, I don't feel any knee discomfort today. I will be sitting back. Now Carol is doing it in level one with a block underneath her and she brings her hands right underneath her shoulders, elbows bent. And then she can moderate the intensity by bending her elbows more or less. And Alex will try to release down, keep your knees together, and see if you can release down in between your heels. She's lowering her back and then she's going to bring her arms above her head. And now, getting a deep stretch through the thigh and the knees. Relax, ujjayi breath. Reclined hero's pose with different variations. Follow the breath. When you inhale, know that you're inhaling. When you exhale, know that you're exhaling. This is a simple mindfulness tactic that I learned from famous meditator Thich Nhat Hanh. You can use it too to become more mindful and aware in your body and in your personal yoga practice right now. If you feel compression in your lower back, you can always lift your hips up and then scoop the pelvis under you even more. That usually alleviates some of the compression in your lower back. Even if you're doing this at level one variation, you can lift the hips, scoop your pelvis slightly under, extending the muscles of your lower back, and it's easier to stay in the pose. Let's come sitting up now. Use your props liberally. So right now, I feel good. A lot of the times, I need to sit on the block for comfort. If you're always straining in yoga, you will not want to come back and do it again. You might hurt yourself, and the discomfort might increase the tension all throughout your body. And what we don't want is additional tension. We only want tension in the muscles that we are stretching at the time. Roll your shoulders back, elbows bent, and see if you can interlace the fingers behind the back. Right? Elbows bent, and try to join the elbows together behind your back. Exhale. Inhale through the nose. The front of the rib expands slowly, and then there's an exhale. Observe your rib cage as you breathe. Chin in, pull the head back. Deep front shoulder stretch. As you squeeze the shoulder blades and elbows behind your back, you will feel the muscles of your rhomboids along the spine contract and become tense. This is what we want. We want to strengthen and help our posture to become taller and we want to stretch the tension out of our sloping shoulders. We pull the shoulders back, roll the shoulder heads back to extend the muscles in the front of the shoulder. Postural correction exercise. Now if you're sticking your chin all the way out, pull the chin back, back of the neck and the spine in one line. Finally, one of the things they encounter most in class, one of the biggest errors, is people relax their elbows forward. The idea here is to squeeze the elbows behind the back, activating the rhomboid muscles along the spine, and stretching the front of the chest. Elbows bent. Some more bent. There it is. 
And from here, we graduate to downward dog. So we stretch the front of the shoulder. Now we're going to stretch the underside of the shoulder in downward facing dog. Pull back. Walk your dog by the right knee, then the left knee. Right knee, left knee. Right knee, left knee. Mm -hmm. Keep extending the spine all the way back. Hands glued down like suction cups. And from here, there's energy up the arms, up the shoulders, and back. And see if you can pull further back, releasing your heels to the floor. If you have tight hamstrings or your lower back, bend the knees deeply, but keep extending your tail further back to give your spine maximum extension. Make sure to roll your shoulders away from the ears, so the space in between your neck and the shoulders. Wide shoulder blades. Excellent. Let's begin our vinyasa sequence. Let's begin moving and stretching out our legs. Extend your right leg back, please. Three-legged dog. On the exhale, right foot forward in between the hands. If your foot doesn't get there, grab it under the thigh, push it forward. Good. Now let's get, grab our blocks. Spin the back heel to the floor. Make sure there's a little width in between the feet. So you're not walking a tightrope. You're not in one line. The left foot is outside and there's a little space between the front heel and the back heel. Then from here, pull your heart forward and pull your right thigh bone backward. Squeezing the right leg as straight as can be. Coming into pyramid pose. Back heel is on the floor also. big toe of your front foot is pressed down and from the grounded foot you start pulling and squeezing the leg as straight as can be. Push into the floor. Now you might be wondering how do you balance on the blocks? There are three settings. This is the low setting, this is medium setting, and this is high setting. The setting you choose depends on the level of the flexibility of your hip flexors and your spine. If your spine is inflexible and you get stuck here, you need your blocks in the high setting to support you. If you can hinge in the hip and go a little lower, but no lower than parallel to the floor, use your blocks at the medium setting. And if you can release your upper body, belly on the thigh, lower ribs on the thigh, maybe go to a lower setting or get rid of the blocks completely, bring your fingers to the floor and release your upper body over the thigh. Good. Triangle pose. Keep the legs steady. Do not move the feet. Keep the feet grounded. Right hand remains in the block. Keep the hips square. Left thigh keeps turning down towards the floor as you lift the left arm up to the sky. Good. All right. Fingers together. There's energy all the way from the shoulder up the arm. Very nice. If you get tired, right, there's variations. You could look at the floor if your head, neck hurts. If your neck is okay, look to the side. But generally, we want to follow the movement. So if we're turning open to the left and towards the ceiling, we want to extend and look up to where we're going. Keep rolling open the torso. Turn open the belly, but keep the left thigh turned down. Good. Feet stay rooted as you release the left hand to the right block. The block outside of your right foot. Remember your settings. Low setting, middle setting, or high setting for revolved triangle. Press down into the block and through the block into the floor to maintain steadiness. Right? You need the block for steadiness. Pull your tail back. Extend your skull forward and extend the right arm up for revolved triangle pose. Suck in the belly towards the spine and use the corset muscles to corkscrew open the upper torso. Now there are variations. Now Carol has a really nice revolved triangle 
But if you're at level one and you need some ease, you can always bend the knee. You can bring the hands to your lower back. You can bend the front knee, and that will help you to twist more open the upper torso. Or you can even lift the front heel off the floor. So this is a variation for a revolved triangle pose. Good, Carol, you can go back to your regular triangle pose, revolved triangle. And this is hard. This is one of the hardest postures in yoga, is the revolved triangle. Good, okay. All right, turn to wide-legged uh, forward fold. Right hand down inside the foot, turn to your left. Feet parallel to one another. Grab your ankles and fold forward. Wide-legged forward fold. Mm -hmm. Trying to hinge at the hips, extending your heart out. So back bend a little bit here, Alex. Back bend, very nice. Keep the spine in one line. Outer blades of the feet press down. The arches lift. If you can't feel your arches lifting, lift the toes. Lift the toes. Ah, that's really hard, but it engages your inner shin bones. The thighs lift. Knees are straight as can be. Relax your neck and keep releasing the spine down. That is a beautiful wide-legged forward fold. Breath applies, knowing that you're breathing in and knowing that you're breathing out. Keep the breath fresh and cycling through your body. Excellent. Hands to the hips. Lift up your upper body. Push your hands into the buttocks and send the hips forward and bend back. Mm -hmm. You can bring your feet closer, but keep the outer blades pressed down. Feel the feet rooted as you send the hips forward and bend back. The head goes first, then the neck, then the upper back, then the middle spine, and then the lower back. And the hips push forward. Four, five. Four. Three. Two. Breath is uncompromised as you slowly roll up your spine, starting with the lower back. Then the upper back. Uncoiling, nice and slow, coming up. <sighs> And you're up. Excellent. Horse pose. Bend your knees. Feet out to the sides. Turn the feet out 45 degrees. Hands inside. Left hand turns in. Right hand turns out. Drop your left shoulder. Roll the right shoulder open. Look up. Look over your right shoulder. Exhale. Inhale. Come to center. Turning your right hand in, left hand out, drop the right shoulder, roll the left shoulder open. Deep shoulder and inner thigh stretch. Exhale. Inhale, center. Turning the hands, press the knees out. Exhale. Keep pressing the knees apart. Inner thigh stretch, shoulder stretch. Inhale. A little faster. Exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale to the right. Inhale. Exhale, left. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, good, come to center, turn to face the center of the mat and come to upper foot short position, move the blocks to the sides, upper push up, on the exhale, lower push up, we hold the pose for five deep breath and low push up. And Carol, you'll be doing with the knees on the floor for level one. And Alex, try it with your knees off the floor. And then if you have to, bring the knees down. Let's come down. Five deep breath. Low chaturanga. Inhale. Belly in. Low back flat. Exhale. Come down. Four, four. Hold it steady. Pelvis tucked underneath you. Four, three. Hovering over the floor. Four, two. Building strength in our arms and chest. Four, one. And release. Untuck the toes, cobra pose. Shoulders roll forward and shoulders roll back. Come up. Pelvis on the floor. Lift the chin, stretch your throat. Now there's many variations of cobra pose. A low cobra is mighty fine. If you feel compression, 
If you feel no compression, see how high you can get. Without feeling compression or strain, breath is smooth. Good. Look forward. Find your right foot. Find your left foot. Find your right foot. Find your left foot. Right foot. Left foot. Look forward. Lion's breath. Inhale. Look towards your third eye. Tongue out. Inhale. Third eye. Inhale like lions. Good. Downward facing dog. Feet together. Extend the left leg high to the sky. Three-legged dog. Exhale. Left foot forward. Spin the back heel to the floor. Use your blocks if you need. Figure out the setting. Pyramid pose. Use the upper body as a lever to control the descent over your front leg. The upper body is the lever that helps you to increase or decrease intensity in the back of the hamstring. So the lower you release towards the leg, the more intensity, the higher you lift your upper body away from the leg, the lesser intensity. Only you know best. Hmm. Ujjayi. To maintain the hips square, pull your left buttocks towards the right heel of your back foot as if there was a string connecting the two. From the left buttocks to the right heel. Breathe in. Breathing out. Shoulders away from the ears. Releasing down. If you can release all the way down over your legs, cool. Deep hamstring stretch, kneecap lifted. Energy through both legs. Excellent. Lift your upper body halfway up. Make sure you have a block underneath your left hand or no block. That's your choice. Keep the hips square and the left feet pressing steadily down as you lift your right arm up to the sky for triangle pose. Do this slowly so you do not lose your balance. And extend the right arm vigorously towards the ceiling. Breathing in, curl fingers together and pull up. That's it, nice. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Maintain connection to the floor through the balls of your feet. Rolling open. We're opening up like span of a bird, right? Long wingspan. Here, the right thigh is turning down and the left thigh is pulling back, maintaining steadiness in the pelvis as we're rolling open the torso and you feel a deep stretch through the outer rib cage. Hold steady the hips. Hold steady the hips. Like the center of balance is right there in the pelvis. Good. On your next exhale, release the right hand down and start corkscrewing your torso towards your left side. I'm going to use a block. If you don't need a block, cool. Usually this posture requires some form of support. Remember, the more you push through the block down, more stability you have. Extend, whoa. Extend the left arm high to the sky. Pull your pelvis back and your skull forward and keep finding that stability and balance in your revolved triangle on the left side. How deep can you twist without losing the connection to your vital life force, the breath? Maintain concentration, look up at the ceiling. Breathing in, roll open. And on the exhale, wide-legged forward fold to the right. This time, grab your right ankle with both hands. Both hands, Carol, if you can. Nice. Turn your body to face the right leg and fold in. So now we're doing a wide-legged forward fold to the right leg. Excellent. Good, good, good. Feel the feet rooted into the earth, inner arches lifting, so all the way through the inner thigh there's energy.
Good, and you're lifting your toes. That's nice. So at home, same thing as Kara. She's lifting her toes to engage the inner arch and build up inner arch muscles, which will give you spring and buoyancy. Alex, try the same thing. Lift your toes and see if you can maintain stability pressing the balls of the feet down. And switch. Grab your left ankle, turn your belly to face the inner left thigh, and fold in. Use your bicep muscles and your arms to pull the upper body closer towards the leg. Notice if you're leaning too much into your heels of the feet or in the balls of the feet. Can you find balance between the balls and the heels of the feet so you're centered? Balanced practice. Excellent. Okay, come back to center. Hands to the hips. Lift up your upper body. Bend backwards for five. Deep breath. Nice and slow. We're releasing backwards. And again, we need to engage your abdominals slightly to extend the spine. Once you learn to wrap your corset muscles to stabilize your spinal column, you will be able to extend the spine by the virtue of the strength of your core muscles, the corset muscles. And once you feel like you are supporting your spine with these muscles wrapped around your spinal column, you will be able to manipulate your spine and release deeper into these back bending postures. Slowly start to unravel. Bring your hands to your heart. Pause here. Breathe. Mm. Bend your knees. Stretch your right knee out to the side. Inner thigh stretch. Then the left knee. The right knee. The left knee. Right knee, left knee, keep your feet flat. Uh huh. And move side to side, inner thigh stretch. Four or five. Breathing in. And breathing out. For three, two, and one. Come back to center, turn your right foot out, facing center, we will do our chaturanga and then we will take a break. So right now we work upper push up, lower down, lower push up, hold five deep breath, nice and strong, activate your upper arms, belly pulled in, pelvis tuck under, skull pulling forward, maintain horizontal position, four, four. Hmm. Three. Two, fight, fight, fight for it. One, and release. Cobra, shoulders roll forward, shoulders roll back. Lift the chin, stretch your throat. How far back can you bend backwards without strain, without painful stretching? Make sure your ego is not involved. What's involved is your awareness of your flexibility level in the stretch in the present moment. So we are exercising with mindfulness, staying on purpose in the present, non-judgmentally. Excellent. Child's pose. Pull the hips back, knees apart, toes touch. And arms pull forward. Hmm. Make sure that your trapezius muscles are nice and soft. Neck is soft. You're getting a stretch in your lower back. Give 
her body the rest that it craves. Follow the breath down into the center of yourself, the inner eye. Be conscious that you have a soul, you are that soul, you have a body, you live in this body, your soul lives in this body. We need to take care of this body for you to feel healthy and happy. And learning how to manipulate the body is skill in action, performed through hard work and dedication. So the more you devote it to your body and make it a priority in your life to maintain it just the same way you do when you brush and take care of your teeth early in the morning, once you make this just as equally important as hygiene, you will notice your mood, your level of health increasing and being more stable. Let's come into Downward Dog for our last sequence. Let's take a few breaths in our Downward Dog to set up. Thighs engaged, chest pulling towards the upper thighs, head loose down towards the floor, pulling your armpits towards the back of your thighs. Extend your arms vigorously. Bring your feet together. Extend the right leg all the way back. Inhale, three-legged dog. And on the exhale, put it between the hands. Pyramid pose. Back heel spins down. This time, remember, you can use your blocks if you want. Here you go. And you can flex your foot. Spread the toes. Again, belly on top of the thigh, chest on top of the, of the thigh, and then finally, the head. Try not to hasten your prog progress. Be where you're at. Work from within your limitations so then you can steadily build up your routine to where you become comfortable and the muscles are easier to stretch and that routine helps you go deeper into the stretch. That's how you develop proficiency, longer muscle tone, and the ability to increase the depth so if you want depth, do not hasten progress. Follow the progress as it occurs, as it unravels. Excellent, okay, from here, foot flat, and walk your foot behind the left hand. So here, I usually like to be on top of my blocks. Walk your foot behind the left hand, kind of like crisscrossing or right leg in front of the left. And then, release the upper body down, turning your belly button to the inside of your right thigh. You should feel a stretch in your outer IT band of your right leg. Breathing in, and breathing out. Remember, the upper body is a lever that you use to increase or decrease intensity. And if you want to go for more depth, you can continue walking the right foot out to the side more. And you'll feel a deeper and deeper stretch. And again, don't hasten your progress. Be where you're at. Hmm. Deep outer thigh stretch. It's important to get at least five breaths in each one of these postures to get maximum results. To allow the muscle time to adjust and build a healthy habit. Good, now like a typewriter, cha-ching, bring the knee out to the side for pigeon pose. Slide the knee out to the right, 
to the edge of your mat, bring the knee down, and then pull your left toes, extend the toes, and pull the left leg back through the toes. Excellent. If your right buttocks does not reach the floor, you can always place a block underneath your butt. That's one variation. And then you slowly release down. Carol will stay in level one on her elbows. You can also stay up if your upper body doesn't even reach the floor, but that's okay. And breathe. And Alex will release all the way down and extend our arms forward. Keep your hips square. Prevent the body from collapse, either to the right buttocks, where you see that the left thigh is off the floor, or prevent collapsing to the left thigh, outer left thigh, with your right buttocks completely lifted. Try to maintain equilibrium between the left and the right buttocks. Hips square and release forward as much as you can. Pigeon pose. You should feel the stretch in your outer right buttocks and your outer right thigh. If you feel like more intensity and you are ready for it, you may start pulling your shin bone forward. Try one inch. Stay in the middle. Push your shin bone maybe another inch forward. And Carol is trying that. Very nice. Good. She just pulled her shin bone forward almost parallel to the short edge of the mat. That's not going to happen for everyone. Carol is quite flexible. But where are you right now in your practice? If you're feeling knee discomfort, flex your foot and then press the ball of the big toe out. That might decrease your flexibility, but it will improve your stability and improve function in your knee joint over long run, decreasing chance of injury. Good, lift your upper body up. If it's not possible to do king pigeon with your shin bone parallel to the short edge of the mat, move the shin bone diagonally so the heel is facing your left hip flexor. Remember, you can always have a block underneath your buttocks. In fact, why don't we start there, ladies? Look at a block underneath your right buttocks, sit up. Make sure you're in the middle of the left thigh. Look back. Right hand on the thigh. Left hand scoops and grabs the left foot. And try to pull the foot towards you. Use it as a lever to feel the stretch in the lower left thigh. King pigeon pose. Now, you can always release the block and try to release the inner groins down towards the floor, maintaining balance. If you want to go for more depth, you can slide your foot into the crease of the left elbow, hand facing out like you're about to give a five. You lift your right arm up, hold a hand behind you, see if you can interlace the fingers, lifting the chest, facing forward, and maybe even pushing your head back into your upper arm to give you more of a stretch in your armpit, increasing the shoulder stretch. Very nice. Lift your chin, pull the head back, and breathe, breathe, breathe. Good, good, good. You feel a stretch in the thigh? Good, excellent. These are excellent, excellent postures for a front thigh stretch, even more so than reclined uh, hero's pose. And this will set us up nicely for when we do our challenge pose for this class, bow pose. And let's release. Excellent. Press your hands forward in front of you, shoulder width apart. Use your fingers. Press up, send the right leg back into downward dog and walk it out. Walk your dog. Right knee, left knee, right knee, left knee. Shaking out any stiffness and tension from your right buttocks. Good, both legs straight, pull the hips back, regular dog. Extend the left leg high to the sky, inhale. Three-legged dog. On the exhale, release the foot forward in between the hands. Back heel to the floor. Flex your front foot, spread the toes. And release the upper body over the front leg as much as you can, keeping your spine straight. 
Nice. Carol is engaged in her blocks. Alex is using her fingertips for support. You may bring your hands flat if you want to go deeper. Remember, first, spine always retains extension not to compress your lungs, keeping the breath fluid and alive. If you want, hinge the hip more, belly to the thigh, then the lower ribs, upper ribs, and finally face goes down inside the shin bone. My left leg is fully active with my thigh firm, so firm that it's actually contracting and lifting up the left kneecap. My back leg is extending, grounding through the heel. And I'm following my breath, making it smooth, slow, and steady to help me stay in a state of mind of equilibrium. Lift your upper body up halfway, hands underneath the shoulders, foot down, and walk the foot behind the right hand. Turn your belly to face the inner left thigh now, and then start releasing slowly over your top leg, and you will feel a deep stretch in your outer left IT band and the outer seam of the left leg. Excellent. Block. Bring the block on the outside. Keep extending the thigh up, firm, firm, firm. Very good. Neck is soft. If you need to pull forward at the heart, right back by the spine, keep the neck long. So the head down and extend the skull. So the neck is long, there's no wrinkles in the neck. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the front leg is crisscrossed over the back leg. That allows you maximum extension of the outer seam of the leg. These muscles are usually untouched in virtually of many yoga classes. Make sure you hit these muscles in our Namaste Warrior strengthening and conditioning class. After all these squats, you owe it to yourself. If you want to go deeper, you can always keep moving the left leg out to the side, crossing it over further. Notice that my belly did not roll open to the side. My belly button is still facing down towards the floor. I'm maintaining extension and lengthening that is occurring as I'm stretching in the left side of my leg. Good, like a typewriter. Send the knee out to the left and drop it down right at the edge of your mat. Extend the right leg all the way back for pigeon pose. For most people, the shin bone is going to be at a diagonal position on their mat with the heel of the left foot facing the right hip flexor. This is cool. If you want more intensity and you know you can withstand it without strain, you flex the foot and slide the shin bone maybe an inch or two further forward. And then start releasing down to your elbows if possible or maybe lower, forehead to the hands, or extend the arms out completely. When I walk around adjusting people in their pigeon pose, in my regular yoga classes, what I notice most often is people use these passive postures where they don't have to engage their muscles to also disengage from their mind. Yoga is about mindfulness throughout this experience because you have to be mindful of your ujjayi breath and listening to the sound of the ujjayi. That reinforces your concentration and inner attentiveness. So if you become mindless and your mind uh, wanders elsewhere, 
you have lost the connection to your body. And remember, we live in this body and we want to be conscious of our human experience at all times. So use your mind constructively to get into the body. Breathe into the tension, right into the hip flexor, right into your outer buttocks and see if you can with joy exhale and relax and release the restlessness and the tension from your body. Inhale, invite the energy into the hip where the tension lies. Exhale, release the tension from the place of being. Constructive meditation in the pose. Mindfulness. Final note, whatever notes or information that I pass on to you on the right side of the leg applies to the left side of your body as well. So remember the information, try to embody it. Excellent. Let's come up. King Pigeon, I would prefer if you place the block underneath your buttocks, maybe pull your shin bone back slightly. You're sitting square in between your right and left hip. Look back, left hand on the thigh. Right hand grabs your foot and pulls it in. Notice if this side, the right side, is stiffer than your left side. Most of us are quite asymmetrical. Yoga helps us achieve more symmetry, but we must first become aware of our asymmetry. So if you notice that one side is stiffer or more tense than the other, well that's the side you need to work on more and maybe spend more time in. Since this is a class for everybody and not individually catered to one particular person like yourself, make sure that maybe after class or you pause this DVD and stay on the side that's tighter longer to bring yourself back to balance. King Pigeon Pose, maybe try variation. Maybe remove the block. See how you feel. The heart is lifting, the foot is pulling in. Carol, keep turning your right thigh down towards the floor. Mm -hmm. Don't let the right thigh lift. Keep the middle of your right thigh facing down. One more. And a release. Excellent. Instead of downward dog, let's come up lying down on our belly. We have done a lot of back bends. We have done hip opening exercises, leg stre stretching and strengthening. Now it's time for the challenge pose of our class, which will be bow pose. Carol will be doing a variation of bow, which is a preparation for bow. It's called skydiver pose. Alex will be doing full bow and I will be doing the same thing, maybe showing you other variations. We will do bow pose twice. The first time, five breaths, we take a break, and then the second time, same thing. Carol will perform the skydiver pose both times to strengthen the muscles in preparation for full bow. All right, first release your forehead down to the floor. Set yourself up, so Carol hands under the shoulders, feet up, knees on the floor. Inhale, grab your ankles. And on the exhale, press your pelvis down and lift up. Bow pose, toes touch. Lift your heart. And breathing in. And breathing out. The thighs are engaged. Think 
as if you were an archer, stringing a bow to shoot an arrow. To do so, the bow must become tense. You must have the right tension by pushing your shin bones backwards, which will help you lift the upper body. If you're not pushing the shin bones backwards, your upper body is bound to fall, and your heels will release towards the buttocks. You want to push the heels away from the buttocks and tense the bow. Make it ready to shoot an arrow. Four, two. Lifting up a little higher. Four, one. Look up, reach up. And slowly release the muscles. Hands underneath the face, relax. Right cheek on top of your hands. Lower back soft. Get ready for our last bow. Forehead on the floor, prep your legs, grab your ankles. To lift up, you must press down. That's the law of gravity. So make sure you press your hips and the pelvis down and lift everything else up and push the ankles back. If you feel like trying, you have a tense bow, you might want to start rocking forwards and backwards with a bow tense. That's it, good job. Up, down, up. Only when your bow is tense and you're able to consistently keep the legs extended, lifting your upper body, will you be able to rock forwards and backwards. You might be able even to lift up, so stand on top of your thighs. I'm using my corset muscles here to extend my torso away from my pelvis. If I was to collapse in my corset muscles, I would compress my lower back and I would feel strain, pain, and suffering. Lifting up and slowly release. Hmm. Don't move a muscle, just relax. Maybe the left cheek on top of the hands or the floor. All right, let's lift ourselves up. Plow pose is next. So let's come slightly towards the front. You have choices. The easiest choice, if you cannot go into plow, is to lift your legs up the wall and allow the blood to stream down into your heart and your brain. Stay in this position. Or, Carol, can you demonstrate a plow pose, please? Try the plow, bringing your legs over the head, feet to the floor, good. Come to the balls of your feet, very nice. And look, hands to your lower back for support. Good, good, good. Shoulders roll underneath. Go ahead, Alex. You may try the same thing, either with your hands clasped or on the floor, your choice. So this will be your level one. If level one is still inaccessible, legs up the wall, that will allow some of the blood to trickle down into your thyroid, into the brain, refreshing the glands, refreshing your brain. Excellent, and you can see Alex has her arms extended and she's pressing her forearms down, fingers clasped. Spine is tall, tail lifting, hips extending, feet walk, uh, the ball of the feet walk towards the head and the heels pull backwards. So the toes pull in and the heels pull back, so nice. Let's stay in plow pose for exactly a minute. Once you master plow pose, there is shoulder stand, which is the next in the sequence. You may lift the left leg up and the right leg up. Carol will maintain plow. Alex, you may come up into your shoulder stand.
The chin is away from the chest. Try to balance in between your shoulder blades. Maintain most of the weight there. Stretching the back of the neck. Use your upper arms to prop you up. Once you get comfortable in between your shoulder blades, there's many variations. Again, your corset muscles are strong. And you may even, this is one of the variations with the arms in front. So there's many things you can do once you master these postures. Once your neck is strong, once your corset muscles are engaged, you can then go up lifting without hands. This is just a demonstration. Please don't do this at home until you are ready. And let's slowly release if you're in shoulder stand. Come into plow pose. Arms by your sides. Carol, same thing, and slowly release out of the plow into your sitting forward fold. And you need to move back. <laughs> so move back in your mats. Pull the fleshy parts of your butt back. If you have trouble, if you have stiff lower back where your thighs are tense and you can't go forward much, sit on your block. And ladies, you may go ahead into level one variation, which is just going forward regularly and see if you can use a block. So I'm using a block underneath my buttocks with my knees bent, release the chest to the thighs and grab the ankles. So this is level one, this is the beginning when you want to feel the stretch but you have tight hamstrings and lower back. Keep your heart extending through the skull and fold. The block helps the pelvis tilt forward, the upper body, allowing the upper body to release over the legs. Chest blue to the thighs. Or you can try it like Harold without a block. Inhale, extend, lift, and exhale, fold. Sitting forward fold pose. Good. And Carol is using her biceps to pull the tops of the feet back and extend through the underside of the legs through the heels. So she's getting maximum extension in her hamstrings. Relax the neck. Keep moving forward. Sitting forward fold. Try not to round your spine on your way down. Keep your spine extended to prevent compression in your lungs. This posture helps you get maximum extension, maximum height out of your body, maximum muscle tone and length. Good, lift up your upper body, staff pose, sit up tall, flex the feet, spread the toes, hands on the sides of your body, shoulders roll back. Bend your right knee and bring the right foot over the left knee. Keep sitting up tall. Remember, block underneath your buttocks is a wonderful option. It will prevent you from rounding and keep your spine vertical when we go for a spiraling twist. The left arm will wrap around the right knee. We will turn back. If your hand doesn't reach the floor, place a block behind you. 
pulling the knee towards the chest and turning the chest out from inside the thigh. Look over your shoulder, flex your left foot, and breathe. The more you're able to pull in the belly, the better. The other way, Carol. The left hand around the right knee. Yes. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Lift the spine, inhale, press into my hand, long spine, and exhale, twist. Slow breath. And that's it. to center. Switch. Right foot in front, foot flexed, left foot over the right knee. And I like sitting on the block because I'm able to press my sitting bones down and by pressing down I'm able to extend vertically more keeping my spine fully erect. Right arm wraps around the left knee. Nice. Left hand behind. If it doesn't reach the floor use a block. Suck in the belly and wrap the belly around the spine. Breathe. Use your right arm as a tool to pull in your left knee towards the inner right ribs. Look back over your shoulder. See how far you can turn your torso. The head follows, but don't crank the neck. Make sure you spin open the torso and look back. Come back to center. And our final pose of the day is, of course, corpse pose. Find a comfortable lying down position. I will set the timer for five minutes. Feet about mat distance apart. Lie back. Arms by your sides. Pull your shoulder blades gently down the back. The heart is open. Lower back flat. Five-minute corpse pose relaxation. Your eyes close, but you remain alert. You're turning your attention inwards to scan the body for tension and melt the skin, muscle, organs, and bones through the mat, through the floor, becoming heavier and heavier, softer and softer. Let go of your striving, let go of conflict, let go of resolution. Simply allow your body to be as it may, watching it like a witness.
your mindfulness practice continues in corpse pose, the last pose of the class. You're paying attention on purpose in the present moment, breath by breath, without judgment, just being with the body, hanging out with it. There's nothing to do, just be. As your being not doing, is there softness? Is there steadiness? Is there stillness? And if not, can you introduce these qualities into your practice of the corpse? To become more yogic, we must learn to understand different qualities of being. We must understand their value. The quality of stillness is not moving, like a corpse. The value is the ability to stop the constant grasping, the constant tension, and simply let go and be free. So understanding the definition of yogic values helps you become a more thoughtful practitioner of yoga. So even though in this class we practice postures, it will behoove you to learn the philosophy and the values and qualities that make this practice yoga. And then try to embody these qualities and values not only on your mat, but also in your daily living, in your daily existence. Can you be more mindful as you're eating? Can you be more mindful as you're doing your homework? Can you maintain a good posture, smooth, fluid breath? Can you be aware of your tension in your body? Can you be aware of your thoughts before you say words, before you speak? Can you be aware of your actions? Can you be more involved and responsible for yourself as you live your life? Can you be more conscious of the way you live your life? Excellent. Bring your feet together and bring your arms over your head. Now pull your feet forward, pull your toes forward, pull your arms behind you, pull, 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 take a deep breath in. Pull, 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 pull. <sighs> Relax. Contraction and then release always feels good. Remember what it feels like to be released to be liberated of tension. So that way when tension creeps up and you are aware, you are mindful, you are able to reduce it or not even take it on. That is the true power of yoga. The ability to see, to be conscious, and to live in a manner which exemplifies skillful living, skillful action. All right, guys, let's come sitting up, facing the front, to conclude our practice for today. 
Guys, thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of Namaste Warrior Yoga Foundations Strength and Conditioning for Your Whole Body and Mind. Thank you for tuning in. Namaste.